And I, I want to stress this here because of the fact that we are at a major zone, it doesn't mean you'll take a trade the next week. Could take two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, two months, doesn't matter. But you have to keep watching and you cannot just tell yourself, oh, because I have a loss or because it didn't turn out the way I wanted to, I just don't trade. No, it's not gonna work that way. You have to keep watching and you have to keep understanding where players are at and which ones are at major levels. After what we just experienced, doesn't it? Grilling out, lawns being mowed, and pools opening. These are some of the things we expect with summer. <laughs> Good morning, traders. Welcome back to Warsaw. It's my last day in the city today, and I have a kind of a packed schedule for now. A lot of things to see that I didn't see before. So I want to start with a lunch in a Polish restaurant. I have one in mind. I'll tell you if I can find it easily. So guys, one of the things I was told to try multiple times here in Poland are the dumplings they have. It looks really good. That's what I ordered along with a bowl of soup, a chicken broth. Should be good. We'll uh, enjoy that meal. That's my first time trying Polish food, so we'll see if that's good or not. But it should be very good. It smells really good. So. Alright guys, so enough talk about the food we need to get on the chart because it's Monday morning right now for you and I want you guys to be ready to trade properly. And so what I want to do today is, I've been doing this for about three weeks now. Today I want to combine two things. Trades from last week, as well as the review of the, the charts. So we'll do that at the same time. And of course, if you guys have any questions about that topic, just comment below after and we'll make sure to answer your question. But I want to go through all the pairs once again. And I've been through them a couple of times before, so I kind of know what it's about. So I'll cut short more when it's not needed to talk about. And I'll go a little bit more in depth when we talk about something more specific. Eudicam is the first pair on the list and this pair has been very interesting. I actually took a trade last week on this pair and I'll show you guys exactly the whole process and how that works. But the pair right now is at this level here, 0.97, a major level that we've talked about in the past. Now it bounced a little bit and I said last week I would remove it from the watch list. I did in fact unflag it, which made me miss the setup. So the, the pair kind of pulled back as you can see there's a big wick here or it pulled back to the zone then went back up after. Basically, if you go on a one hour chart, right, you would see price pulling back right here all the way to the zone. Okay, this was uh, this patch we're gonna the 30th of May. Pulling back straight to the zone, making this angle thing candle, very nice setup. Except that I didn't flag the pair, so I kind of missed the setup. Even though I was looking every day and stuff, I missed this one. But here's what I did, and I don't do that all the time. I tend to do this sometimes. I waited for this. And I came around here, around this area here. That's when I saw the price. Okay, a little bit more, a little bit above. And I told myself, well, so what do I do now? Do I just enter and have a big stop loss and just take the trade as is a little bit above? Or do I wait? Might be better to wait. That, that's what I thought. So I waited a little bit. And what I did is I placed my order kind of here near the high. Like where I would enter usually, where would be the proper entry. So this was triggered a couple of days after right here a couple of even hours after okay so stop loss place build below i gave myself some room this time not to be stepped out so 0 0.96933 i think so long story short this first part of the trade was closed at 21 go to risk second half at 31 which is not closed yet and we've been going up pretty fast pretty straight uh this by the way is not a setup here it would be too high above the mill bands so that's not valid but the same kind of type of setup repeats itself we had the first one here and the second one here. Very similar. The other thing profit at 31 is not triggered yet. And actually, because I forgot to put the thing on the chart and put it right here, that's how things would look. Now, so that's about it for the pair. Now, you could look for more opportunities to buy on this pair, of course, when it's gonna pull back, but we're pretty much at the highest band on the one hour chart. And the four hour chart, pretty much the same thing. So I don't see much opportunity on this for the next week. That's why I will, this time, once again, flag the pair. AODGPY is doing something we talked about last week, random, at between two zones. We had some opportunities to buy here, but this is very in tight range. And actually, I'm not sure if we had any setup on the pair. No setup at all. Which is not the best, so you might want to skip this one. AOD and ZD, uh, this is another pair I took a trade for the past week. Same principle as AOD can. And you notice that those pairs are both correlated pairs together, right? Because they have AOD together. The risk is going to be split. That's how I deal with it. 
you might deal other ways there's a video about that it's going to be linked below but simple and simple okay but this trade was a trade stopped out and this is the proof that correlations aren't always perfect they're not the straight guideline that you have to go through so while AUD CAD was moving up pretty fast AUD and ZD was just dropping and doing nothing and hitting my stop loss okay so I'll show you guys what happened so simple and simple I went in the one hour chart price has been pulling back the past week from this high here coming back here we had the setup here and now Actually, this was, I think, when I had an interview scheduled and just 30 minutes before the interview, I was trying to place a trade, didn't place a trade, I had other things to do. So that's what happened, I entered a little bit later. He stopped loss below low, and we were rewired to risk 3 to 1, which is here, and this one was stopped out. Nothing complicated, pretty simple, and that was definitely a good trade in my opinion. ADUSD, this is at a still the major level we talked about, and they didn't do much the past few weeks. See how like this is a relevant decision. So this week was a big wick. This week was a little bit of a bearish movement. Now bullish movement, but kind of fail with the wick. And this kind of a fail again bullish movement because we came, we went all the way down. It's kind of a fail bearish movement, and then we pull back up. This is interesting. So we didn't do much on this pair, but you can look for more opportunities on this pair for sure. And I'll keep it flagged for the week. Can't see HF is at this zone so this is a trade we talked about a long time ago it's just going to the downside really good pair if you're going to trend trade but i personally don't trend trade too much at the moment uh euro aud is going through a pullback we thought we would wait for this level here 1.51 it's still not reached yet so there's nothing to talk about too much we'll wait for the price to get to the zone and we'll move to the next pair in the meantime which is closer this one to the level euro cad very close to 1.50, a major level, like we talk about many times. You have to wait for price to pull back to the lower band for some potential setup with the Wonger band if you want to trade reversals, like I'll probably trade. But this is a waiting time game for this pair. EuroGDP is coming back, I think, to a level. Is that possible? Yeah, this level here. And we said we didn't really like how this was moving too much but we are still at the level okay so i'm gonna look on lower time frame the daily chart the one hour chart and the four hour chart to see if we have any potential setup on this pair and for now we have nothing but that's why we need to wait for price to show us setup before entering a trade as a reversal trade okay really important but we'll keep this on flag for the week euro gpy at the major zone here that we talked about again a few weeks ago i think let's see what it did so went to the zone, made, oh, this is a beautiful candle with a lot of potential to the upside, like kind of a, a fail move by the sellers and then the buyers took up and put this back up, which is awesome. And so let's see on the daily chart, we had no setup. On the four hour chart, no setup either. And so we are looking for bullish setup. Okay, keep in mind, even though like some people want to say, well, we are below the zone. No, it's not, it's not like a fixed number. So. We need to look for this on higher time frame, which is a weekly chart, and we clearly see is on the support at this level. Okay, hence why, no matter what we have, we look for buying opportunities at this level. In my opinion, we have to be very careful and just wait for the proper setup to show up on the chart. Your USD at a major support zone that is quite wide. It's like a 300 pips zone, 1.14 to 1.17. So we look for buying opportunities, of course, on this. And the daily chart actually had a nice setup here. The reason why I didn't take that setup is because these have not been working really well on the daily chart for a long time. And I'm kind of waiting to see this momentum start up again before we take those trades on the daily chart. So I'm more likely to look on the lower time frame. Even though we have a setup on the daily chart, I prefer to wait a little bit till we get a different setup or similar setup on the lower time frame, if that happens. So you can look for this, like price pulling back to the lower band of the Bunker band on a 4 hour chart or a 1 hour chart, we're pretty close to it, so that's a good sign. And in my opinion, those trades are much easily achievable. Because the target on a 1 hour chart is much closer than the target on the daily chart. Like 3 to 1 on the daily chart is pretty big. It's going to take weeks to get there. Okay, As opposed to a 1 hour chart, it's going to take a few days. Or even a day, if sometimes it happens. Okay, so I keep this one flag, I'll look for setup on lower time frame because I prefer this at this point. With the market condition. And that's about it for Euro USD. GPCAD is at, I think, a major level, once again, but it hasn't been doing much. At the 1.74 level, 
I just went down and went down and went down. And that's where I'm starting to think that we might not have any push at this zone. Okay, and that this zone might not be too valid. Even though we bounced before a couple of times, it might not be very interesting. Okay, we can still look for setup at this point because it's not too late to the other zone. But it's going to be less probable to have good setup at this zone when price was like nothing. That's going to be a winning game for this pair also to look for buying opportunities. GPCHF is, I think, reaching a major level. Yeah, so we said we would not flag this one in the past week because we were not sure if it would reach the level. But now it's getting really close to the level and, and we had some pressure here by the buyers pulling this up with the with the wick of the candlestick. So interesting to see on the lower time frame. The chart had nothing, four hour chart had nothing either. And the one hour chart had no setup so far. Okay, but we can still look for more setup at this point. And Usually the setup we can take don't have to be exactly at the zone. They can be after when we push a little bit higher and we have this setup with the Bollinger Band. So we can wait a little bit and we can wait for better setups. But I'll definitely flag this pair for the upcoming week because I want to look at it more closely in case we have any setup. GBP, GPY is doing not much between those two levels. It's being back and forth without a clear range. So it's not really interesting for me to trade. GBP and ZD is coming back to this level but not quite yet. So I'll wait a little bit till we start to flag it and look closely. GP and ZD, we're waiting to the, for the price to get to this zone 1.31, a little bit lower. And then we'll look for more setup on this pair. Even though we could start to look right now, let's see what's happening on a lower time frame. We didn't have any setup yet, but no, okay. So we have to wait for price to pull back down a little bit to look for trades on the pair. And to the CAD, is between two zones once again, didn't do much. USD CAD is at this zone here. I think we had sort of a push the past week. This pair has really been going sideways on the lower time frame, I guess between two kind of zones, but it's really ranging. Okay, so if you look at the higher time frame, you see the candlestick are all similar, close to each other. So we have a bullish here, and decision here, some decision here. Uh, these were pretty much trend, trend bars, but the other ones are pretty, pretty doing nothing. Okay, so not interesting to trade, but it's at the major zone, so we still look. And we see if we have any evidence to take any short trades on this pair. And finally, you see SJD is at this major zone, which we talked about again many times in the past weeks. That's why we flag them on the left, the right hand side here. Okay, because th those ones we have to watch them, and they're at major level. So really important to keep watching and to keep being aware of what happens. And with USD SJD, we had a trade on this, I think. And the trade got stopped out at break even. Yeah, this is the trade here. Price move a little bit above, we got stopped out at break even. Now we are about at the same level here. But we look for selling opportunities at the upper band of the Bollinger Band on a 4 hour chart or a 1 hour chart, which we're pretty sideways now. So interesting to watch for now. So, guys, that's about it for the review of the week. It's pretty simple. A lot of pairs that are not at levels or maybe close to be to level, so we cannot really trade them for now. But we have to keep watching, we have to keep being there every single day. Doing this review every day to see what's changing, what we need to adapt for, and looking for setup on a pair that are at levels. Let's get back to the food, and my last day here in Warsaw. See the appearance is like the same as Chinese dumpling, pretty much the same thing, looks exactly the same. But it really tastes different. You feel like there's more meat, more quality, more ingredients. A little more oily too, but it's really interesting. Total cost 45, a little bit more expensive than Chinese dumpling of course, but different quality, different ingredients, so I think it's worth it to try. Quite good. Now having only a couple of hours left in Warsaw, one of the places I have to go see is near the river. I think some people call it River Bank. We'll try to have a look at that. And it's a bit of a walk from here, of course, but I wanna walk in the same shape and see what that looks like. So let's go along.
All right, so I've pretty much made it to the water. I don't think there's much to see here. There's a couple of restaurants on the side of the the street, but that's about it. Let me try to see the water, and then I'll walk around and see what I can find around here. So guys, this river has nothing really exciting. It's like just a river with the forest on the other side and trees. But there's a couple of kind of type of boat, but attached to the, uh, this side here, which are like bars. So that's interesting. And, but yeah, that's pretty much what's here. So I'll try to walk along this side of the river and see if I can find a place to stop a little bit. Because as you know, the month of May just ended and it's time to review the month and see what went well, what didn't go well, and what I can improve on. So that's what I'm gonna do when I find a place to Stay. And that is it guys, I ended up again in the old city after doing my monthly review. Everything's good, now I'll head back to the apartment in just a minute. I have to pack my suitcase for tomorrow and uh, it's gonna be kind of uh, another moving to another city of course. Looking forward to it as always and thanks guys for watching, I appreciate it. I'll call it a day for today. I'll catch you here tomorrow in Warsaw to go to Gansk. Ciao. The beach.